Welcome back to the channel guys. I've just bought something that is going to kickstart the next stage of the build for the blue car and it's something that I think a lot of people do or want to do or are potentially interested in. So this is an engine one for a Fiat 500 and let's check out what I've bought and what we're planning to do with it over the next few episodes. So this is what I've got. At least this is what I've got out of the car. There is still some tinware left in the car. Um, clearly, it's an air-cooled Fiat engine, but the air-cooled Fiat engine that it is, is a 126A1 stamped block. So it is a 650, and it has a 650 stamped head. It's got absolutely zero provenance. I got it for a good price. We'll have a little look at what exactly it is that I bought, what's missing, and what I need to do with it. Because I'm sure you can see there are quite a few missing bits at the minute. Now, if you've ever picked up an engine of unknown provenance, obviously the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is strip it down, but how far you strip it down and what you look for kind of depends on what you're actually planning on doing with it so what are my plans for this well i've gone through a number of uh, iterations in my mind of what i wanted to do whether i was going to go like big bore big barrels uh larger long throw crankshaft um all sorts of exotic carburation the, the works and, and then i thought well actually what is it i really want to do with this car and with this engine and it's just poot lit around town and take to classic car shows so i've decided the route i'm going to go with this build on this engine is the same as i have done for the y block that's in there so it's take an engine strip it down fix anything that's not right set the tolerances and then make it the best that it can actually be with minimal kind of period tuning. So although I haven't taken the, the head off yet to see which head it is and what the um, likely standard compression ratio is, my intention over the next few months and the next few videos is as follows. To port out the head, so do some work on the inlet and the exhaust obviously i have um the stainless exhaust that's currently in the blue car will be going on here i'm going to get the head skimmed by about one and a half mil which will take it down into this uh heat sink ring here and should allow me to raise the compression ratio to about nine and a half to one which is sort of the the sweet spot before you get a lot of uh, a lot of pre-ignition i'm not going to do anything to the valve gear or the valve train other than make sure that it's timed um correctly because by all accounts using the standard non-adjustable cam pulley you can get anywhere up to about 15 degrees out so i might as well just get that bit um absolutely right and so porting the head and raising the compression ratio, that should go quite a long way to upping the power along with the freer flowing exhaust. And then what I'm going to do, because I have one on the shelf and this is very much along the lines of building with what I've got, I've got one and a quarter inch SU carburetor, which will flow better than the IMB28. So we'll pop that on there. So what I now need to do is to start removing some bits from here and actually see what we've got there feels like there's quite a lot of end float in this uh, crank um, but that's possibly because it's not been assembled properly um, you can see it well, you can't see it now but there's a little bit of a little bit of movement there so I'll be taking the whole bottom end apart and checking the bearings and whatnot obviously I have a new fuel pump for it distributor needs a couple of little little extra bits but i'm kind of interested to see what uh head it's actually got so we'll we'll whip that off now and have a little look 
at which generation of 650 head that is and whether it's one that's numbers matching to this block now I, I don't actually know what that engine number at the bottom casting number means in terms of date range could mean it's an earlier one could mean it's a later one I'm not sure but we'll see we'll see what the uh, what the head tells us so first thing we can see is that the valve gear is uh, is all in place I had a, a horrible feeling that there was going to be no valve gear in it when I uh, when I took that off but whilst it's uh, none of it's set up and none of it's adjusted um, it is at least it is at least there head has been off by as I, said, I don't think it's the fellow I bought it off it's the guy he bought it off and then immediately chucked it under his uh, under his bench because all of these head bolts um, all these nuts on these studs are just finger tight and there's two uh, that are that are missing there so let's see what um, hidden treasures come out of this got to remove the uh, the valve gear first of all because otherwise you can't access these these bolts here so we'll, we'll just take that off now so as I expected all of the head bolts were loose finger tight and um, so I've just taken them off I'm leaving the push rods in situ for the moment because I don't uh, want to mark them up for orientation because they need to remain matched to the lifters because they get a wear pattern on them um, when the head came off first thing you can notice is it's got the wrong head gasket so it has a head gasket for a 499cc which is why it's that slightly different shape if I recall correctly and I'm pretty sure that I do the ones for the 650 are round and the firing ring is round and they're actually the right size these are this is too small um, pistons initially look all right there's a little bit of I think it's probably just crap where it's been standing for a while in here um, no real ridge but when I take it apart it will be worth just cleaning it uh, cleaning it out and uh, just reaming it slightly you know honing it that's the word I'm looking for just run a hone down there and and clean it up before reassembly um, the pistons are oh, if I can hold those well, I can't do this with two hands if you hold those down they are running up and down in the block which is fine um, looking at the head itself it is a, a later head so the earlier heads had a slightly lower compression ratio they had a, uh, a an edge on the chamber here which was sloped towards the spark plug to uh, squish the mixture over there in these later ones they up the compression ratio ever so slightly um, just literally by filling in this this area here to reduce the combustion chamber size um, giving a, a higher compression ratio so that as I say will, will be skimmed down I will double check the measurements I want to say it's about a mil and a half uh, which will take it just into the first of these cooling fins and we'll just take this ridge off there um, obviously the valves will come out prior to that cleaned up relapped and reinstalled and uh, I'll do that whilst I'm porting the uh, porting the head which obviously hasn't had any work to it so the exhausts gonna be opened up and all smoothed through there I have got a whole video on that but I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail on this um, when I do this one because it's something you you can do at home if you've got a vague bit of skill and some big balls and you don't mind potentially messing your messing your stuff up but that's the uh, that's the cylinder head anyway so the top of the engine looks good those are our plans for the top of the engine I just need to find the right local machine shop to mill that for me because whilst I've got access to some some decent tools um, at work I don't have a mill that's big enough to clamp that down and, and mill the surface um, but there you go uh, so next thing is to 
looking at all the, all the missing bolts. I think all of the bolts are missing for the timing cover. So we should just be able to pop the timing cover off again. I'm not going to be able to do that one handed. So let me just um, shut the camera and get the timing cover off. So the timing cover actually looks pretty decent. The oil seal looks almost, uh, looks almost new. We do have a timing chain. Um, again, I'd, I'd need to check on the uh, specifications for the engine as to whether that is a little loose or not. And knowing that this engine has been apart um, probably quite a number of times, judging by uh, all of the uh, the bits that were were missing as to whether or not that engine is is timed correctly. Because I don't know whether that's been taken off and put back on out of time. So I've got no way of knowing whether the engine's actually. Um, timed correctly on the cams so as part of putting that back together and checking this uh, this end float to make sure it is within within spec and shimming out whatever bits need doing um, we'll, we'll check all of that at the same time and what I'll do as well is I'll get a um, a, a, uh, a dial gauge on here and actually just check the alignment of the cam and you can elongate some of these holes and then weld them back up afterwards uh, to make sure that the cam itself is timed correctly so again that's not actually spending any money that's just making what you've got set up correctly and the best that it can possibly be um, what I haven't done in this video is flip it over and look at the bottom end and that's because I'm not sure quite how much oil there is in the bottom but what I will do before I start any form of further stripping or cleaning is to flip it upside down to take the oil pan sump off and then check the big end bearings so that is where we're going to leave it for today because that is what we've got we've got a, a stripped 126 block 650 with a slightly newer higher compression head um, and what am I going to do with it I'm just going to make the mend I'm going to make this the best it can possibly be so we're going to time the cams correctly we're going to hone the um, bores and re-ring the pistons if required. We're gonna pour and polish the cylinder heads. We're gonna skim them to up the compression ratio to nine and a half to one. And then we are gonna stick a nice British um, one and a quarter inch SU carburetor on the top. New fuel pump. And we're gonna run a um, uh, wasted spark 126 ignition system and all of those things together are stuff that anybody can do in your shed or in your garage to make your engine run as well as it can without spending huge amounts of money and it's going to be absolutely perfect for pooling around town and keeping up with traffic more so than the old um, 499cc was so um, give us a like give us a subscribe Hit the bell and you'll be notified with updates as we get a bit further along with this.